Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, aka Epic Zara, and I'm back with another video. I hope you missed me. I missed you all. How has your week been? Tell me in the comments down below. But anyway, I'm here to talk to you about how to structure a hair regimen. If your hair length is stagnant, if you're not retaining length, if you're experiencing a growth plateau, then your hair routine's probably trash. I know that's probably a bit triggering for some people, but I'm not trying to attack you all. My hair routine has been trash, has the potential to be trash, and is trash sometimes. But today I'm going to give you a very basic and complete structure for a hair routine. Now I don't want to waste your time, let's get right into the video, but of course before we do, please be sure to give this video one big thumbs up, it lets YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content. Please be sure to share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones. Please be sure to comment down below, let me know what's going on in your hair routine, let me know what's going on in your life, I just enjoy talking to you all. And last but never ever least, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. Okay, I'm gonna give you a moment to subscribe because why not? Okay, that should be more than enough time, you guys, so let's get right into this video, but please don't skip the ad so your girl can make this money and can continue making awesome content for you guys because I mean, I need this to be sustainable if I'm to devote as much time to it as I would like to. Hey y'all, if you're not following me on Instagram via at Epiczara, E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A, then you're totally missing out. I have a lot of beautiful images and photography to share with you all. Be sure to also follow me on Twitter at Epiczara if you want to chat with me, share with me, enter giveaways, etc, etc. Just like exercise, skincare, food consumption, and anything else that requires consistency, a pop in hair regimen is no different. My hair is thriving because I have a hair routine that I repeat on a weekly to bi-monthly basis. I only experience setbacks when I either handle my hair roughly or I stray from this regimen. When tailoring a hair regimen, you have to think of your primary hair concerns. For example, my primary hair concerns are scalp health because my scalp is extremely sensitive and very tender, as well as length retention. Now I advise all of you to make a list of your hair woes and troubles, as well as a list that is comprised of what you'd like to achieve for your hair journey. Making these kinds of lists will help you determine how to structure your hair regimen, as well as help you to decide what type of products to use to achieve all of your goals. Now I'd like for you to leave that list down below, or these two lists rather, down below. Let's help each other out and figure out how we can have the most popping hair regimens of 2020 so we can have that Rapunzel hair. Now this video will focus strictly on structuring your regimen. Putting all my products in this single video would have been extra long. We would have been watching like a BBC documentary or something y'all. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody has that type of time. So I'm going to put the other video right up here for your viewing pleasure. Please open it up in another window and you can view it after you view this video. Again, that's all my favorite products. Now a standard hair regimen consists of these four components. Cleanse, condition slash moisturize, detangle, and style. If you have afro textured hair, you likely have to insert some categories between the three that I've mentioned. Now this list is kind of lengthy, so I'm going to read off of my notes here so you guys know exactly how this is being structured. Pre-poo, detangle, cleanse, treat, Condition, detangle. Deep condition, detangle. Moisturize, detangle. Seal and or style, which is mutable depending on the product. Now detangling can go in any of these places, so I've noted that, but it's important to limit it as much as possible to avoid excessive shedding, breakage, or pulling of your hair. Now with all of these steps, we're going to go over each one in depth, and I'm going to explain why each is important and how you need to approach each step depending on the type of hair that you have. Now the pre poo is actually optional. You may not need to do it often, if at all. However, if you have very kinky hair and or your hair is very tangled and or in need of serious rejuvenation, then this is a phenomenal step to add prior to your shampoo and the rest of your wash day routine to ensure that your hair is nice and healthy. I typically take this opportunity to section my hair by placing it in twists since it's so long and stretching it as well as very, very lightly finger detangling. If you can even call it finger detangling, I hate finger detangling. It's more like a light separation 
and light loosening of some certain tangles. This sectioning of my hair is one of the many ways I'm able to avoid single strand knots and other touching stories that basically are the result of severely tangled hair. Now there are two major ways to pre-poo that I've observed. The first way is with an oil-based product and the second way is with a water-based product. Using oil to pre-poo is really fantastic when you use a penetrating oil because it staves off high growth fatigue. Penetrating oils include coconut oil, ukuba butter, sunflower oil, and babasu oil. Now I know I included coconut oil in this list, but I only did because it's a penetrating oil. Like we can't deny that fact. However, I still hate it so much. And I highly, highly do not recommend if you have low porosity hair. Now I'm going to reference my coconut oil hate video right here. There are other low porosity naturals that have actually sung the praises of coconut oil, but I can't relate. So I'm not gonna do that in this video. <laughs> Excuse me. Ugh, not cute. Now when using an oil to pre your hair, I recommend doing a hot oil treatment. This has the potential to improve the penetrating power of the oil. Now there's not scientific evidence for every oil out there saying that yes, if you heat this oil up, it will be able to penetrate your hair shaft better. But there is that potential there, so it doesn't hurt to do it. And it's very soothing to use a warm oil on your scalp and on your hair. Now to heat the oil, do this in a cup or an applicator bottle using a bowl of hot water. Do not microwave the oil and do not put it directly on a stove top. No, 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 no. Gently heat the oil. Do not make it hot or scalding. Now if you're a low porosity natural and you're doing a hot oil treatment, the heat will likely coax your cuticle open a little bit and allow the oil to penetrate more deeply. So this is really a great option for us great option for you and really it works for everyone but this is probably between the two pre-poo types the safer option for mid to high porosity hair because the more porous your hair the more prone it is to high growth fatigue now oil is hydrophobic water repelling which means that its presence in the hair shaft will actually prevent excess water absorption This method typically features a plant gel, a detangler, or any other pre-poo product. If your hair is prone to tangling, this is an excellent option because it typically causes tangles to melt prior to shampooing. My favorite pre-poo product is included in my favorite products video, which is already linked in the cards. There is not a single product I've ever used in my life that has melted my tangles as effectively, as quickly, and as effortlessly as that product to understand exactly how amazing it is you definitely have to try it and to find out exactly what it is you have to click that i up in the top right corner if you already have not <laughs> and just open that video up in another window so that you can view it later now both of these methods are really great at lubricating the hair prior to cleansing and protecting the hair during the cleansing process but it's very important for you to understand your hair and its porosity so that you can determine which method is going to work most effectively within your hair care regimen Cleansing is so super important. Now shampoo is meant to coax the hair cuticle open just a bit, break up oil and dirt, and suspend it so that it can be rinsed away. The purpose of shampoo ultimately is to remove environmental debris, product buildup, and excess sebum. And sebum, of course, is the oil that our skin naturally secretes. Your scalp needs to be clean and debris free so that your hair follicles can generate healthy strands of hair. Your hair also needs to be clean so that it can more readily respond to products. Now a lot of people with kinky, coily, or curly hair wash their hair once a week to once a month. Now you need to experiment to find out what frequency works for you. I personally wash my hair once a week to once every two weeks due to my scalp sensitivity. And if you know that you have a sensitive scalp that's prone to itchiness and dryness, then you might consider washing your hair once a week and maybe refreshing during the week or once every two weeks and refreshing periodically. Now, if this is your first time establishing a natural hair regimen, you might want to start off with once a week and then experiment with longer intervals. If you've been in the game for a while and your current wash routine is not working for you, 
change up the time frame. With hair, there's no fixed regimen that's going to work for each individual. So it's important to take your time to understand what works for you and your hair. Now with my research, I've come across five primary types of cleansers. There may be more, but these are ones that I came across most frequently. So, Soaps are a great alternative for people who want to avoid using harsh detergents on their hair. Now, I personally use soap from time to time for a few reasons. They can be easily diluted, they can be very gentle, and depending on the formulation of the soap, they can be very nourishing and very healing. Soaps do, however, react negatively with magnesium and calcium in hard water to form the precipitate that we all call Soap scum. Shampoo is a much better option if your water contains minerals because soap scum also has the potential to build up on the hair. Moisturizing shampoo. Moisturizing shampoos are shampoos that typically do not contain sulfates. Now I have nothing against sulfates, y'all already know, but a moisturizing shampoo, a shampoo that's actually going to impart moisture is probably not going to include them. Now moisturizing shampoos are to be used with more frequency you can use them as often as once or twice a week because they're supposed to be that gentle. Now it's important to figure out what works for your hair because there are detergents that are just as drying as sulfates for people that use them. So it's not everything that is without sulfates that's going to make sure that your hair is nice and soft and not strip. Clarifying shampoo. Now a clarifying shampoo is a shampoo that will strip your hair completely. Your hair is going to feel squeaky clean. It's not going to impart moisture. It's not going to make your hair feel soft. It's not going to allow you to pass go and collect $200. But ultimately it's a shampoo that's really great at giving your hair a fresh start. And it's something that is typically recommended for use once a month or even longer intervals. If you have hard water, you need to use a clarifying shampoo. There's no two ways about it. You need to use a detergent that's potent enough to remove the minerals from your hair. If you use oil, styling gel, and or grease, you have to use a clarifying shampoo to remove that product buildup. Soap can do the trick to a large degree, but again, if hard water's in the mix, your soap ain't gonna do nothing but add soap scum to your hair, and that's, that's not cute. Chelating shampoo. Chelating shampoo works on a much deeper level than even a clarifying shampoo and is primarily used to remove stubborn mineral deposits on the hair. Swimmers and people who have hard water in their homes should definitely make use of chelating shampoos. If you use grease, heavy butters, and or oils, then a chelating shampoo could also work on a very deep level to remove petrolatum from your hair. The final shampoo, which technically could fit into these other categories, but I think is important to discuss on its own, is a medicated or antifungal shampoo. If you have a sensitive scalp and or other scalp issues, then you definitely need to make use of a shampoo that contains certain active ingredients. If you suffer from itchy scalp and or dandruff, I would recommend making use of an antifungal shampoo, a great one that I love and I use. Actually, I'm just gonna, you guys go to my product video so you can figure out what it is. If you suffer from seborrheic dermatitis or psoriasis, then salicylic acid shampoo is a phenomenal option. Tar shampoo also works very well. Now shampoo is very, very deep. I've highlighted these shampoos so that you can choose one that's going to work for your hair and especially your scalp. Now this is a whole other video topic, so I don't want to go into extreme detail here, but I do encourage you to please do your research and determine what is going to work best for you, for your hair, for your scalp, and your environmental conditions. It's very important. I know I've touched on this a little bit, but I'd like to tell you guys how to know if you should change your shampoo schedule or your shampoo period. If your hair feels limp, dull, lifeless, greasy, dirty, or your products are not finna absorb into your hair, then you probably need to shampoo more often. If your hair feels dry, brittle, or frizzy, you may need to extend the time between your washes. Now I use grease and I use silicones. I do not care. <laughs> So if you use grease and silicones or other butters and oils that are highly occlusive, then you need to make sure that you're cleansing on a more regular schedule. But a disclaimer, not all silicones are created equal. There are some silicones that are water soluble and there are those that are not water soluble. Most of the ones I use are not water soluble, so I need to cleanse regularly. 
The lighter your products are and the more permeable they are, the less you need to cleanse. But you might find, like I did, that the lighter your products are, the more prone to dryness your hair is. When it comes to treating the hair, I tend to think of fortifiers and reconstructors. In this category, I therefore include henna, cassia, and protein. Let me know in the comments down below if I've missed any other types of treatment. But basically, henna is a strengthening and thickening treatment. A lot of people actually use it to impart the dye loss on to the hair because it binds with the keratin, has a special chemical reaction that pretty much just binds it to your hair forever and ever and it does not come out, it does not wash out, it does not fade, essentially, once it's settled into your hair. Now I have an entire video on henna which I'm going to link in the top right corner like I always do. I'm not going to go into detail here because this video is already pretty long and you ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between can check out how I use henna in this video right over here. Cassie is very similar to henna but it does not impart any color. I mean, it does impart like a blonde tone, but it doesn't show up on dark hair, obviously. I mean, come on now. <laughs> now, proteins are primarily used for rebuilding the hair strands and work best when incorporated into a regimen that is already full of moisture. Now, the frequency of using protein-based products is going to depend on the potency of the product, the porosity of your hair, and the amount of damage you're trying to prevent or correct. If your hair feels dry or you notice breakage, you should avoid protein and instead seek moisturizing treatments. There are certain protein treatments that are strictly salon systems and they do not sell them to the general public because the instructions are so meticulous and they need to be followed to a T to avoid any adverse side effects. Now, even with protein treatments that are available to the public, you need to make sure that you're following the instructions so that you can avoid damaging your hair now, if you're low porosity like me, you still need protein, sis, bro, bae. <laughs> but what I recommend is to use a protein treatment that's on the lighter end of the spectrum, and I've included some, well, I've included one in my product video, which of course is in the top right corner. If you have high porosity hair, you can use a more potent protein treatment. That kind of protein treatment is going to benefit your hair and fill in the gap, improving your porosity issues issues. Now any good hair care routine has to include a great moisturizing conditioner. That's extremely important and something that I actually cannot live without or else my hair is going to feel like straw and yeah, it's just not cute. Now the moisturizing conditioner follows the cleansing process. After every wash, do not skip conditioning your hair, even if you're not using a conventional conditioner. Now a good conditioner adds slip to the hair and closes the hair cuticle, making it smooth, slippery, and very easy to detangle. A really good conditioner penetrates the hair shaft just a little bit so that your hair stays softer, longer, and of course I've referenced that in my favorite product video. I've found some holy grail conditioners that have changed my destiny. Now these kinds of conditioners that follow your typical cleansing routine are daily rinse out conditioners. Now that does not necessarily mean that they're for daily use. I mean, I'm sure that there are some people that do use them daily. I'm not that gal. Now I personally use conditioner to refresh my hair between washes, especially if I want to soak my hair. I have very low porosity hair, so if I want my hair to get wet, it's to soak it. And I talk about this in my Truth About Grease video, which I'll link in the description box, as well as in the cards above in the right corner. Now I, of course, also use my rinse out conditioner every wash day. Deep conditioning is even more important than general conditioning because it allows your hair to have a dosage of nutrients deeply penetrate the hair shaft. Now it's recommended by most outlets that you deep condition your hair once a week for up to 20 minutes. To do this effectively, it's advised that you use dry or wet heat. Now the wet heat I like to use is a steamer and the dry heat that a lot of other people like to use is a hooded dryer or some sort of like bonnet or heating cap. Your environment may have an impact on your deep conditioning regimen, so it's important for you to be cognizant of how your hair responds to your environment. Very arid climates are probably going to warrant more frequent washing, at least more frequent refreshing, as well as deep conditioning. If you deep condition too often in very humid environments, your hair could become 
laden with moisture and ultimately lose its structural integrity. One thing I always, always recommend is to steam the hair, especially if you're low porosity, because I mean, those cuticles are already like locked extremely tightly. So when you steam your hair, you're coaxing the cuticles to open just a bit to allow the ingredients of the deep conditioner to penetrate your hair shaft more effectively. I talk about my steamer in my hair tools video and I low key think I ran out of cards. So I'll link in the description box down below or I'll just link a playlist of everything that I've literally talked about in this video so you all can view that. But um, if you can't afford a steamer or you don't have access to one for another reason, any other reason, then you can do a DIY steaming method. If you guys would like to see me do some DIY steaming or DIY hair hacks that allow you to have that like, you know, rich hair without spending your money, then let me know by dropping some green emojis down below. Now, for those of you that wash your hair twice a week, only one of those washes should include a deep conditioner to avoid high growth fatigue. Now to touch on something that's very key, bear this in mind very well. You need to use something that is specifically a deep conditioner. There are a number of moisturizing conditioners that simply will not deep condition your hair no matter how long you leave them on your hair. There are even certain deep conditioners that do not penetrate the hair shaft very well. These types of formulas are cream rinses or instant conditioners that are marketed towards people who have very well maintained hair already. They coat the outside of your strands and give your hair a soft feel and again can be very effective for people whose hair is already well maintained or more prone to retaining moisture. For a truly deep penetrating conditioner, you need to look for a conditioner that actually has products that penetrate the hair shaft. Now, if you all would like a dedicated ingredients video, please drop a few pink emojis down below. The next step in a hair regimen is moisturizing. Moisturizing is so important and moisture is ultimately the answer to so many problems. Breakage, tangling, matting, dryness, and even hair loss are things that can be solved by moisture. Depending on the porosity of the hair, as well as the types of products you use in your hair regimen, you may require moisture on a daily basis. It's important to moisturize all parts of your hair with most of the focus on your ends because they are the oldest part of the hair. They're also not surrounded by anything else, so they're more prone to breakage. And because they're old, they're more prone to dryness. Now it's also important to make sure that your scalp is moisturized, but I personally do not recommend bringing moisturizing products onto the scalp since the scalp is typically more sensitive than the rest of the skin on the body. If you suffer from dry scalp, you may consider applying a bit of water and grease. So that's how I moisturize my scalp and maintain my scalp health. I also use oil from time to time, but I definitely prefer grease for my scalp health. Two types of moisturizers are the leave-in and the water-based moisturizer. Now leave-in conditioners are optional to a degree if your hair is very prone to dryness. If you're low porosity, you need something that's going to penetrate your hair shaft and maintain moisture for you throughout the week, ideally. So I personally prefer to make use of a leave-in. Now for me, the leave-in aids with my detangling process because I only detangle my hair after I finish shampooing and conditioning it. My leave-in also keeps moisture in my hair because for me, water is not enough in this environment. Some people use their leave-ins daily, but I don't have that time or that energy, so I like to use a leave-in that's going to keep my hair moisturized for a long period of time. Now, water-based moisturizers are basically thinner leave-ins that are more geared towards actual everyday use. The purest water-based moisturizers do not contain petrolatum, lanolin, or mineral oil. Now, obviously, I don't think that lanolin, petrolatum, or mineral oil are bad at all. I literally have a video devoted to the lies told about hair grease, which I'm going to link in the description box down below and in a playlist in my cards because my cards are getting really long. <laughs> I do, however, believe that petrolatum, lanolin, and mineral oil belong exclusively in the sealing step. They do not actually impart moisture, so I feel that they don't need to be in your moisturizers. However, there are people that swear by certain moisturizers that do contain these ingredients. Now, instead of those ingredients, water-based moisturizers contain aloe or water as their base, as well as certain emollients and or humectants, and basically humectant just draws water into the hair, while an emollient softens the hair. If your sealant is totally occlusive and permeable, then it's advisable to use products that are more emollient and less humectant. Following the moisturizing process, I like to place my detangling process. 
Now we've already touched on this, but detangling can occur at almost any point in the regimen. It's just important to find out what ultimately works best for you and your hair. Now the first piece of advice I can give to you is to detangle on a regular basis. It's extremely important to remove shed hair and release tangles from kinky curly hair so that it doesn't knot up on itself. If you're detangling properly and regularly, you should see a reduction in hair loss, matting, tangling, and breakage. You'll also see a reduction in detangling time if you're maintaining your hair in between washes and detangling properly. No matter how you choose to do it, please just do it very carefully. I personally prefer to use a tangle teaser type brush or a Felicia Leatherwood brush. I personally cannot stand finger detangling and wide tooth combs, but please don't rule them out just because I don't like them. They may actually work for you. Now it's important when you're detangling to start from your ends, always pulling down and then work your way up. This is going to reduce the amount of breakage that you see. You may also consider detangling under the shower stream while you're conditioning or during your pre-poop process. Again, this is just reminding us that the detangling can pretty much occur at any time during your regimen, almost any time. Now I'll save a detailed explanation and demo of my detangling and other wash day habits for my wash day routine video, which I know all of you are waiting for. Please drop some more purple emojis down below, but be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know exactly when I post that particular video because I know it's heavily anticipated and I anticipate it too, y'all. I really want to see that video too. So let's get it on and pop in. Now certain outlets say that you should detangle your hair only when it's damp, not dry, or when it's soaking wet. But um, I don't believe in that for a few reasons. Everyone's hair is different. There are some people whose hair breaks when it's damp or wet, so they have to detangle dry. And there are others whose hair breaks when it's dry or damp, so they have to detangle soaking wet. There are others who can't find the balance on either end of the spectrum, so the in-between is the perfect medium for them. If your hair is fragile, you may consider actually detangling while dry or slightly damp. If your hair is very tough, you might consider detangling when it's wet or very damp. Sealing ultimately ensures that the moisture you spent so long putting into your hair remains there. Sealing is different for everyone, but if you have low porosity hair, I highly recommend that you consider at least approaching the way that I do. It may help you retain more moisture and more length. Moisture is essentially lost when the cuticle is raised and water leaves your hair. It is also lost when there's nothing to obstruct its departure from the hair. By laying a sealant on top of your hair, moisture is locked in, keeping your hair soft and shiny for a fixed period of time. There are a number of sealants you can use and some of them include grease, oil, butter, gel, and certain creams. I make use of grease, oil, and butter, but I personally prefer to make use of grease at least on my ends. If not just on my ends, then on the entire length of my hair. It's been demonized by the natural hair community for at least a decade, but it's completely changed my hair game. Now I have an entire playlist that details petrolatum myths, its origins, and how safe petrolatum and mineral oil can be in certain cosmetic formulations. I'll link it in the top right corner so you can view everything after this video, and if I have run out of cards, I'll just link it in the description box. For sealing in general, it's important to choose a method that suits your hair. I do the LCO method, which is basically application of my leave-in, application of a heavier cream, and then application of my oil and or grease to seal everything in. Now I do have a video of how I re-moisturize my hair, so if you'd like to see that, I'll link it in the description box down below or in the cards if I haven't run out of cards, which I'm sure I have at this point. Styling is ultimately an entirely different topic, but if you want to see your hair reach its fullest potential, you need to ensure that you're doing low manipulation styles. I have a video all about protective styling, which I'll link down below. I don't want to go into detail about protective styling because I know this video is already very long and I'd like us again to remain focused on building a regimen. Just check that video out. Other low manipulation styles include twist outs, braid outs, buns, which is considered a protective style and etc. I again encourage all of you to do your own research to determine what works best for you. If you like a styling video on low manipulation styles, let me know in the comments down below or drop a yellow emoji, either one. Now this was a long video, but I hope that you've learned some valuable lessons about how to build a hair regimen. I want to make this video nice and full, 
so that you have a lot to take away and can get started making a regimen that's actually going to benefit your hair long term. And of course, if you made it this far, please drop those blue emojis down below. Only the real OGs know what's up. Please also feel free to ask questions and leave your regimen down below by commenting. Let's help each other out and make this a real community experience. I'll probably also make a post on my Instagram via at EpicZara so that we can all talk about our hair regimens and continue the conversation over there. And I'm also going to link all pertinent videos in the description box down below. So don't forget to check that out. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and share. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next video.